Acadia, over the last few years, has emphasized in many different places that I have attended, be it convocation, banquets, gathering, uh, trying to invite uh, students to look to Acadia as their next step. Uh, they've emphasized the word community. And I agree with that emphasis, that word community does play an important role in the reality of what it means to be an Acadia alumni, faculty member, staff member, or student. But tonight, I'm also reflecting on the reality that as we celebrate, and as soon Acadia University is going to celebrate the 175th, the word family is also very appropriate. I gather in this room with people that I've known for a long time and people that I've only known for a short time, I see family. I gather in this room and I see people who by bloodline are connected with the initiatives that brought about the building, the construction of the chapel. I see family. There are people who have served in many different capacities as chaplains, as congregants, as chapel assistants, as interested participants in the ongoing role of the chapel on this campus and beyond. I see family. I see members of the Woolful Area Interchurch Council who now are well acquainted with the words interdenominational, ecumenical, interfaith. I see family. That's the reason we celebrate this so wonderful a place where lots of things happen beyond the windows and the beautiful doors and the walls. It's a starting point. That's why we celebrate this night, the gift of that chapel to us, to those who have been and to those who will come. Through the years, we've seen the chapel change in small and large ways. During Senator Ogilvie's time, we were grateful to have the addition to two extensions that allows us to have a chapel library and some additional offices in which chapel assistants can store things, as well as the non-cluttery chapel can uh, place things too. We've had the addition of a bell at the 30th anniversary that will ring throughout the town for many different reasons, for services, for calling attention to achievements on the campus, such as graduation and the like. We've had, just recently, the installation of a Zimbel Stern, a gift of the class of 1963 in memory of Ruby Mae Thompson. If you don't know what one is, I'm not going to tell you now, but you'll hear it tonight. And as Tom has mentioned, we do look forward, as well as looking back in Thanksgiving, uh, on the website, and I'll have a brief description of what we plan as far as our project to celebrate 50 years. We call it Chapel Connections, and because of the excellent uh, teamwork that I've shared with chapel assistants and with John Scott, who is our university and chapel organist and communications administrator for our chaplaincy, we've developed the project that will allow upstairs some microphones to be placed by lectern and pulpit because people don't know how to project in the same way that they did 50 years ago. So from time to time, we'll need to augment the voice. A small camera placed upon one of the railings up in the gallery. What will this do? Well, they're more than just paperweights. This allows us to communicate in our services and in our events to people beyond just the immediate moment. That means to record for the purposes of podcast or maybe live streaming at some point. In addition to that, we also are looking in the project to expand downstairs technologically. Thus, whatever is seen or, uh, or heard upstairs will be able to be projected downstairs in, in a way in keeping with the 21st century. So we will have a fixed drop screen at the front, which will come down in the chapel hall with a projector, with speakers that then, if there are overflow services, that will also allow for the same uh, experience upstairs to be experienced downstairs. But more than that, Technologically, with the flip of the switch in my kind of a non-technological mind, dreaming, vision state, a flick of the switch downstairs and a plug-in of a laptop or what have you, you then create a great place for presentation, forum, discussion, not just locally to the room, but worldwide. If you wanted to have somebody speaking from Hong Kong or Toronto and having that piped into the, to the chapel hall for the purposes of whatever program or event might be taking place, that too can happen. Hopefully these dreams are just the beginning of things undreamt of thus far. And so it becomes a useful place to many within our university community. With regards to religious events, education events, we strike at the center of the reason for that chapel being there. The marriage between the academy 
and the desire, the need for spiritual inquiry. The chapel, as you know, is a place where, yes, there are services each week throughout all of term. There are about 25 or 30 weddings every year, too, as well as other gathering events of a worship nature that involve interchurch, interfaith, and, and, inter, uh, and ecumenical efforts. But my friends, the chapel is also used for qi jong meditation on Monday nights and a yoga group on Thursday nights and has been used for a women's AA group on Monday evenings. It's a place where I will come through during the day or into the evening and see individuals or pairs sitting in the pews of the chapel wanting a quiet respite on their travels from Huggins to BAC. A place where people can find safety and sanctuary. I get to boast daily to people that that chapel is open from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. That's almost unheard of now with regards to places of worship. Because of the support of the Acadia community, it, it stays and remains an open place of safety, of inquiry, of prayer, of meditation, regardless of origin. And doesn't that speak well to the charter of Acadia University? In keeping with that, looking forward, we invite you with regards to the project to give generously. Sure, I'll say that. We've also had lots of contributions thus far. We're well equipped to put our project into play so that by latest, March 31st of 2014, we will have these things already in place. And if you have op opportunity to make use of the space in whatever way you can think of, call me up and I'm happy to find a space and a time to involve you in the ongoing life of the chapel. In addition to that project, there have also been some initiatives made in celebration. I'm going to invite Blair Williams to come and join me at the microphone. I told Blair I'm not going to make him talk, but I think visual aids are always very good. <laughs> Blair is a brother to Dale and to Jason, and the three of them concocted in their minds and hearts, something to celebrate this time too. They attended Acadia University when penultimate chaplain was presiding. <laughs> and I would like to read for you tonight a citation. Established in 2013 by the Williams brothers, Jason, class of 96, Dale, class of 98, Blair, class of 2005, in celebration of Acadia's longest serving chaplain, Roger Howard Prentice, now you've all learned something tonight. <laughs> and Manning Memorial Chapel's 50th anniversary. On the recommendation of the chaplain, the scholarship will be given to a returning student who combines outstanding academic achievement with a contribution to spiritual life on campus through the chapel and its programs. It is called the Roger Prentice Scholarship. The Reverend Dr. Prentice retired from Acadia University in 2007 after 22 years of service. During his tenure at Acadia, Dr. Prentice planned and supervised a number of projects for the chaplaincy, including the publication of the Chapel Times, the installation of the Chapel Bell in memory of Dr. I. Judson Levy, the Chaplaincy Endowment Fund, the direction of 10 annual Passion Plays and the writing of nine, direction of a number of other plays, the establishment of the Chapel Choir in partnership with Mr. John Scott, in conducting and supervising over the expansion of the chapel building. We are grateful to the Williams brothers for the contributions that makes this scholarship possible, and I will be sure to communicate with them each year as to who the recipient is of the scholarship that we reflect the Acadia spirit in the best. I think we can show our appreciation for this gift. <laughs> These are the chapel assistants for the academic year 2013-2014. Yes, you may be seated again. And uh, they will uh, assist in, uh, in helping you out with that type of generosity. They'll also be greeting you at the door for the service uh, and handing out bulletins and helping to distribute these 50 roses which have been uh, provided along with the floral arrangements at each table by Wendy Rayside. She never likes me to point her out, but I'm going to ask her to stand. Where are you, Wendy? Yes. Her husband, Rob, will get after me afterwards. <laughs> Wendy keeps the chapel space looking beautiful with a floral expertise. And each rose for each family is a gift to you as you're on your way out after the chapel service. 
I want to thank Chartwells, Bob Casey, Colleen Swale, and Nicole Eisner, as well as Tammy Gregory for the provision that allows this banquet to take place, and for Jesse Zink, who is joining us. You'll hear a little bit more about Jesse at the service, who's flown all the way from England to offer the message, a former chapel assistant himself, and for the musicians and John Scott, who've prepared uh, so hard for making tonight's celebration very worthy of the space. By the way, there will be a 645 pre-service music beginning at that time, so I will not uh, talk for very much longer. Uh, reminder, as what has been mentioned before, we will have, thanks to Steve Wilsack, some DVDs made and a podcast to go on our website that will be able to record the service for those who weren't able to be with us this evening. And now it's my pleasure to invite Reverend Frank Locke forward, the first chaplain to preside over the Manning Memorial Chapel, who will offer the blessing. After that blessing, there is no further spoken experience for you other than your fellowship around the table. So bon appetit and Frank. Thank you very much and it's a real pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, thank you, Tim, for the invitation I received and uh, I have many happy memories of 50 years ago. Uh, let's bow in prayer, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you for all the gifts that you give us along the way. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for all the spiritual gifts that we receive. And we thank you so much for the chapel and what it has meant and will continue to mean. We thank you for what we have heard already this evening. And now, Father, we want to thank you for food. We pray that it may remind us of all the blessings we receive at your hand. And we pray, Father, that you will help us to be grateful. And we ask that your blessing will be upon us and on the service and that we will always remember that all good things come from above. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>